you like the stuff, do comment, like, subscribe. Like, comment, subscribe. Just like, subscribe, comment. Comedy Lounge WA, the best comedy club in Australia. Definitely the most fancy one. The other ones are kind of shit. Except for my mates ones, they're good too. <laughs> subscribe. We'll cut that out. <laughs> They're gonna try do three minutes worth of stand up for you, and if you think they're shit, you have the power to vote them off tonight. So on your table, you might have a little paddle or a plate. So if you got one up, hold it up nice and high for me. Those paddles are for you to get kinky with, man. All right, take it easy. Fuck uh, it. Emo's like, fuck. This feels too much like an auction, dude. Uh, there's white people holding up plates. They're like, ah, he looks strong. Let's check his teeth. <laughs> yeah, I know, for some reason they always check for good teeth. <laughs> I've watched a lot of slave movies, motherfucker. I've watched a lot of slave <laughs> This is his teeth being a real thing? Yeah, they're like, yeah, this one looks like you can pick cotton. Look at his teeth. <laughs> yeah, what does the teeth have to do with that? I don't know, I don't make That's the rules. Amazing. <laughs> we have $500 in the prize pool, ladies and gentlemen, put out by Common Ad. Fuck yes. <laughs> Well, we have $350 for your winner, ladies and gentlemen, 100 for second place and 50 for third place, so we're going to have a bit of fun. Uh, like I said, you know, we're going to dog some of these off, otherwise we're honestly going to be here for like three fucking hours. And, you know, I've got a baby to feed, so go fuck you guys, I'm going to have to leave, you know. All this seems quite racist, they make me... <laughs> Very good, thank you for that emo. Uh... <laughs> Our friends somehow. I don't know. Um, we met, a, met on the cast of Russia L4, and here yeah. we are. You know what I mean? No, actually, we met on that uh, like that new soundtrack that's coming out. You haven't seen it yet. Black and yellow. Yeah. <laughs> this song we got really racist before yeah. it started. You know, I mean, usually like the open what to come expect off tonight, and then fuck it up. But, you know, we're, we're kicking it off. For... All right, let's uh, let's start this off, ladies and gentlemen. Let's get your first act up here, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Ian Burke and I just competed in the gong show. Let's get that ramble done for your first act. Give it up for Ian Burke! The, the regional work is kicking my ass. I'm counted down every single fucking day. I, I hit the halfway point this week and I thought I'd be really happy until I realized that was only half. I have to do all that again and I'm like, ah. I, I keep picking up injuries. I'm like, I might actually seriously, like, long term hurt myself. But it'd be worth it if I get to stay here in this wonderful city. Where, that's the goal. But see, I, I'm trying to look into it right now. If I get injured, do I still have to complete my regional work? Do I be like, I sacrificed my body for this country, you, you let me in. So I'm I'm looking into that, because if I find out, I'm just going to fucking put my hand in the wood chipper and just... <laughs> hey, my name is Ian, and I've just moved here from Ireland. Uh... Are you even cheering now, for like... everything? Are you Irish? <laughs> it's a big supporter of life. You know, but it is, it's tough moving to the other side of the world. Like, I had to leave my entire family behind, you know, which is why I did it. Um, <laughs> like, the kids will understand when they're older, you know. Um, <laughs> but I love Australia, it's amazing. But Australian workplaces are wild. On my first day of work here, my boss comes up to me and says, Hi, my name's John, and I'm a racist. I was like, hmm. <laughs> I mean, technically what he said is, my name's John and I'm South African, but you know, um... <laughs> I could tell what he meant. <laughs> no, but the one thing I don't like about Australia, though, is for an immigrant like me, if I want to stay in this country, we're forced to do regional work. And most of us do stuff we have no experience and should not be doing, like operating heavy machinery or working on a farm. Like, I heard of one girl who was forced to represent Australian breakdancing, and, and like... <laughs> You could tell she'd never done it before, you know? <laughs> but I'm loving it here. It's my first time ever living outside of Ireland. If you've never lived in another country, I'd highly recommend it. You know, it's great. You learn a lot as a person. You grow. It changes your perspective on the world. Like, I used to see the world as just being black or white, but since I got here, I've realized there's also Asians. I mean, <laughs> that's class, you know? Because, like, back in Ireland, we don't have a lot of immigration, you know? The only people that ever immigrated to Ireland were the English, and, uh, I was less immigration, more invasion, and kill all the natives, you know? Like, I don't know if anything similar ever happened here, but, um... Fuck it, just feel that white guilt, you know what I mean? But lucky for us, they couldn't kill us all off because they couldn't tell the difference between us, you know? We look the same as them. You know, an English person is just an Irish person that's a cunt. Um, <laughs> John! 
a weird motion to do, but uh, <laughs> you know. But the reason I actually moved here is I moved here for a girl. She is the love of my life, and she has already broken up with me. Um, <laughs> You know, and she was American. I spent a couple of months in America with her before we moved here, and I quite liked America. The one thing I didn't like was the um, people, you know. Because uh, American people are so optimistic, and they've no reason to be, you know. Like, I was talking to one guy, and he's telling me about his son. He's like, my son is so smart. I'm like, yeah, by American standards, that doesn't count. Like, that's like saying I'm the meth addict with the most teeth, you know. Um, Ian Burke, ladies and gentlemen. I'm heading to, back to Ireland in two weeks. It'll be fun. I'm looking forward to coming back. I feel like after a, a break, it'll be now it'll be like a fresh audience. You know, I feel like it'll, a whole new vigor going into it. So I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I'm gonna come back and the same three minutes, <laughs> probably even probably even worse than I, than I was before. Uh, but yeah, if there's any Irish people watching this, um, I will be headlining Basement Jokes on Wednesday the 20. Something, whatever the Wednesday in the 20s is of, of, of October. Uh, Jill is currently offering me a blowjob. <laughs> so I gotta get going. <laughs> do, do, do what, do, show what to do the motion. Point to <laughs> she was like, We have this camera's here, we can check that. <laughs> uh, all right, go off to a good start. Let's get, let's keep that energy going, ladies and gentlemen. Get your second out. Uh, my name's Mark Washington. I'm only here because my mate sent me here, basically. I think this is this person's friend. Oh, hey, him up. hey, this is the guy that's... Uh, it's his first ever set tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, we're gonna, uh, you're going to have a great time. Ready? Let's start that round of applause going for... For Michael Washington! Who's your name? Brett Henderson. My name is Brett Henderson, and I'm here doing comedy. Uh, one of the apprentices is 22. Every day, um, he reminds me more and more of myself at that age. Uh, every day, I just see more and more of myself in him. I hope HR never finds out. Probably not going to let like, unfunny people with plates uh, change my set too much. So he sent me here. I, th I think he sent me here because he hasn't won before. So he needs a bit, bit more comedy genius to get himself through. So. You ever done stand up before? Uh, no, this is probably my first time holding a mic besides just doing karaoke at home, so here we go. If you did win some money tonight, what would you do with it? You've got the potential to win 350 bucks. That's a good good amount of money. I'd probably just donate it back to everyone else here and we'll have a good night. Have you shared any of it with Brett? Well, he told me there was only 175, so I think he's already taken half. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so this is my mate Mick from Melbourne. Our friendship now spans 22 years. We used to do a lot of things in our younger younger times. He's coming over, first time he's come to Perth to see me, so I was like, bro, you gotta get up and do some comedy. I told him half an hour ago because I didn't want him to pull out. I knew he wouldn't pull out, but I also didn't want to give him the chance to think too much about it. So he's gonna be going off the cast. I was like, oh mate, I can maybe give you some jokes or something like that, but... They haven't worked for him in the past, so why would I take those jokes? <laughs> oh, snap. <laughs> Oh, by the way he dances, I can tell he's never been on stage before. <laughs> <laughs> hey, does that count towards the time, or like, yeah. what, how long before they can pull the donut? Uh, as soon as they want, mate. You know? Just get him up. <laughs> <laughs> My mate who's out the back, he got me in for this, so I'm just up here basically because he's. I'm from Melbourne, so. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, don't like it? Please. Because look, to be honest. I said no, I was going to pull out, but my pull out game's not strong. I've got two kids, so I was like, so here I am. Anyway, so I was just basically going to run out on him the whole time, but so I'll, I'll tell you a story about him. Back when we were about 18, I went around to his house, we drank a bit, and he was like, all right, you can stay at my missus' house on the couch with me. I was like, that's kind of fucking weird. But anyway, back then I was a serial bedwetter. So, so I was like, yeah, nah, it's all good. Maybe we should just slow down the drinking a little bit. And he's like, nah, 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 nah. Just, we'll keep drinking. The next morning I woke up in a puddle of piss. So three months down the track, we're out on the drinks again. And he goes, mate, I've got something to tell you. Do you, you remember when you pissed a bed at me, uh, Mrs. Parents' house? Well, 
You don't want to get the punchline? I'm about to get there. Put it down just for like... Keep going, keep going. Um, he was... He basically said, yeah, look, mate, I, you went to the toilet in the night, which is fucking rare for me. Anyway, he goes, yeah, when you went to the toilet, I flipped the mattress on you. And, but, oh, shit. I didn't go down well, did it? Um, oh, that was the punchline. <laughs> oh, wow, okay. Yeah. yeah. Chris, fuck yes, give it up for... It was the shorts for me. Fuck Washington. <laughs> I won't be doing this again. Too bad, look, it's first time. I came with nothing, and I'll leave with nothing, you know what I mean? Like, I did tell a story that went nowhere, so like, I padded, I, I was very good at English essays, talk a lot, good at talking, not so good at getting the laughs. I guess I'll get a little bit sentimental. I'm fucking glad that he actually did it. Uh, I live in Melbourne, so I'm literally here for me dad's 70th. Happy birthday, Pete. Thank you. It's his 70th birthday. Thanks to his boy Mick for doing some stand-up. I came here thinking I'll just take the piss, but I might be leaving with a square on the way down. Who knows? <laughs> Get me up there. Those are some short shots. Okay. Uh, Michael yeah. Washington looking like every contestant on the block you've ever seen. Okay. Booty, um, booty, 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 booty. <laughs> fuck, that was... um. And I think he really thought, yeah, he was like, I'm fucking going to the punchline, I fucking got this, I'm going to nail it. And there's like watching your little league kid just fucking get out immediately. And you're just like, fuck. <laughs>Fuck yes, ladies and gents, welcome back. Uh, in my hot little hands, guys, I have the $500, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, fuck yeah. All right, no, not that many people are very impressed. Fuck you guys. Everyone work FIFO here, do they? Um, bro, with the bandana, you didn't even say shit. You know, you fucking, you look like you could really use this money. You know what I mean? Like, how dare you, you dog? You know, what do you do for work? You're unemployed right now. What accent? Yeah, and you sound like you're a backpacker? How, how'd you afford a ticket to the show? It's like, no, I'm just saying, oh, fuck yeah, you wouldn't be happy with this, bro. This is like, how much is this in your money? Where am I see you from? Uzbekistan. I don't know, where is he from, sorry? Norway. Oh, fuck, sorry, he doesn't give a fuck. <laughs> this motherfucker's like, I am rich compared yeah. to you, poor that's fucks. That, that's that fuck area. your mining boob. That area of blood. Yeah, uh. we, have that, we have that cold money, you know? <laughs> Um, all right, good on you, fucking Norway piece of shit. You think you're better than me? He's like, oh, our healthcare system, fuck you, mate, you know? Let's see how well your healthcare does when you're burning in the sun here, you piece of shit. He really I, don't know, I don't know why I'm mean to him. He really well. don't like Norwegians. I don't know why. There's something about dried herring, fuck you, all right? Um, what do you do for a job? You work in what? In a, in a hospital. <laughs> Is that, do you have an accent or am I just... She's American. Are you American? American? Aye. And I was like, thank God we don't have that. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, I didn't ask for your fucking life story, lady. Okay. <laughs> Fuck, maybe she is American. She loves talking. <laughs> Thanks for coming, man. Um, Alright, so, uh, yeah, like I said, if you don't like them, hold them up. I'm looking for about five or six before we gog them off. Um, other than that, if they're happy, if they're funny, laugh. And, you know, give them some support. Like, you look like you need a laugh, sir. You know what I mean? Like, I'm well, like, people always you've got, fucking, you've got some crazy eyes, brother. Yeah, I don't know why. It feels like you've just lost the kids in a divorce and you're here to let off some steam, you know? And, um, you know, I was thinking to myself, who would spend 1200 bucks on ice? I fucked that up, man. <laughs> Oh, that'll do. Hey. <laughs> hey. Nice. Lucky Skinner, your first finalist. Yes. The bar is low. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> they say you are what you eat. But I don't remember eating no beef from the Middle East. <laughs> so, uh, no, Tim Waltz, though. What a fucking pussy that guy is. I mean, you would never catch me as vice president to a woman. I'm just telling you right now. I mean that's that's like that's like getting the, that's like getting the missus to do the cooking and then you putting on the oven mitts and taking out the food out and being like, honey, food's ready. <laughs> 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 All right. Give it up for your beast from the Middle East. <laughs> and it's weird because they're usually so progressive about women. Okay. Um, <laughs> 
Right, so I like I think she put on the weight due to like obviously the physical demands of the pregnancy, whereas I put on the weight from the mental demands of the pregnancy. <laughs> the mental demand of nobody gonna love this. <laughs> So the mental demand of not leaving or cheating. And here we go. <laughs> now, right whoa, 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 whoa. Hear me, hear me out, hear me out, hear me out, hear me out. I didn't want to do it. As it's the only thing, it's the only example I saw of fathering as a kid. Oh. <laughs> so to be fair. <laughs> At least he's even from his mate, because he came up here and shat the bed too, you know what I mean? Like, it's going to be an awkward car ride home, that's for damn sure. Oh, it was so bad, you're leaving, sir. Fucking hell. Oh, what the fuck's going on, brother? Yeah. Got to the coke. <laughs> he's going to the coke room. Man, I yes. fucking loved how you said that. You're just like a child getting caught in the corner. What are you doing? I'm going to pee. <laughs> And he, and he had the ruler there, and he said, look, darling, look, I've got 10 inches. He said, you got it the wrong way around, darling, it's two. No love bliss, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, fuck yes, give her a big round of men applause, okay. Oh, fuck you. That was crazy, you sounded like a tractor, just, oh! You what? Offended. You're offended. Oh, okay. Good being back in the city. Jumped on the dating app straight away. Hopped on Tinder. Big mistake. Match with like a middle-aged gay couple, and I'm only really bringing it up because you're fucking on stage with me right now. Is that right? <laughs> These two <laughs> looks painful. <laughs> looks painful. <laughs> It's Who like, you call it middle Asia, you little cunt? You know what I mean? <laughs> this fucker, you're straight off the tin onto the bank, you dog. You know what I mean? For my favourite rapper, he just went, the yen. He just went... <laughs> it's the supreme leader of North Guanana. You got him. It's you like, look like a handsome cover band. Shut the fuck up. You know what I mean? It's like Rush Hour if they were homeless. <laughs> Yeah, they made that joke before it again, good job. <laughs> Do you know what I find funny about you, Goose? Fuck all. Fuck all. Yeah, agreed. <laughs> uh, what else can I say? So your dad fuck told me that joke, joke earlier. <laughs> anyway, Tinder. Um, yeah. Yeah, like, like, how can you just someone in there than three minutes? Three minutes of his stand up is almost like a dream for a man. And the least expectation of a woman from a man. Nothing relatable, nothing relatable. Australians have. You know, those of you oaring and with your plates up, fuck you. You morons. Oh. oh. <laughs> you know what? Fuck you. Keep going, big ass. Fuck these guys. They uh, can't make up their fucking mind. Let's go. Brother. Yeah. Looking like an Indian Enrique Iglesias. I love you, you know? I love you too, Chris, uh, but not at the moment. I'm nervous like hell, yeah. I don't do. Yeah. Oh, sorry, you guys were right. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you, you know what? Sometimes you make mistakes, you know what I mean? And like, you gotta listen to the people. Fucking, fuck, we honestly need some subtitles for him. Not for the accent, but for the fucking list. You know what I mean? Like, so, uh,. Would someone please tell white women that just because it takes a village to raise a baby doesn't mean you need to fuck every villager? <laughs> that's crazy because that's his Tinder bio. You know? How do you know? I'll see you, baby. <laughs> Obviously, you're gonna lie. To what the fuck is everyone doing? <laughs> Sean Fournier. He kind of looked like he's dressed up as two Matrix characters, you know what I mean? I was drunk on power there. <laughs> <laughs> it was like Cody 2012 like, all over I again. I am God! <laughs> Uh, my name is Ian Pringle. I'm here doing a spot at the Gong Show. Ian Pringle! Hello, my brother with an old mullet. 
Hey, Dad. <laughs> I don't know, man. Just there. Uh, what the, the other Ian? <laughs> uh, Ian, do you want to join me? It's Ian's there trying to prompt me. <laughs> um, there he is. Man. He's, this is Irish Ian. I'm, I'm Scottish Ian. We came in the, the same same time period. He likes to brag that he doesn't have to do regional work because he's he's a British person. Um, fuck him for that. Fuck him. I don't have to do regional. I'm just there. Uh, did a bit of comedy, a bit of support. I'm working like two days a week. This cunt's chopping down trees every single day of his life for minimum wage. Are you enjoying that, Ian? You know, people say that Western Australia isn't very progressive. <laughs> Everywhere I go, I see Trans Perth. Some of you a little bit surprised I don't sound how I look. <laughs> Just trying to fit in where I live, man. I'm telling you, there's a lot of confidence comes from look looking like a complete cunt. <laughs> Try to fit in, man. I'm gonna get myself some budgie smugglers. Start going to the beach dressed like an Italian woman. I'm gonna get myself two jet skis. Cause having one jet ski is fucking gay, bro. <laughs> now you want to take your mate out in the jet ski, his cock's already halfway up your ass. <laughs> there's a lot of vibrations on a jet ski. It feels fucking awesome being on a jet ski. There's a lot of adrenaline. Sometimes you get an erection. <laughs> so you're on the jet ski with your mate. You're both in your budgies. Your mullets are blowing in the wind. <laughs> you both got an erection. Start to question whether the feelings you got for your mate are platonic. <laughs> you gotta get the second jet ski, bruh. <laughs> I don't know if it's obvious I've been living in Midland. <laughs> I'm doing alright out there though, man. I'm doing alright, I've got a swimming pool. Got access to a swimming pool. Probably the best campsite in our suburbs. <laughs> That's all I tell people back home in Scotland. I've got a swimming pool. I don't tell them I'm selling my arse. <laughs> <laughs> Just to pay the campsite fees. <laughs> you ever sold your arse, brother? You What's and him have like just the opposite haircut. You know what I mean? Like he's got a big beard and nothing on top. What's your name, pal? James. Every man has his price, James. <laughs> what do you reckon? What's the minimum unit price? A dollar. <laughs> All right, we'll do a bedding war. Get out here, one dollar. <laughs> one dollar for a shot of James in the alleyway. <laughs> no takers, just me. Well, and you. <laughs> I'll wear you like a fucking puppet, James. <laughs> Put you in a sundress and call you Miss Piggy. <laughs> Fun, no, no, nice crowd tonight. Seem to enjoy my shit. Yes, um, so we've got a show at the Royal Theatre at the Planet Royal Island in Perth called the 100% Scottish Comedy. Uh, we're also doing dates in Bunbury and Alkimos and looking to add more dates. Um, so it's me, Jill Cordner, who also was on tonight, uh, David Callan and Grant Mushet. Uh, just all Scottish cunts doing fucking class comedy. Uh, so uh, the tickets are selling all right for that, so get on board and it'll be fun. Thank you for having me. Um, I enjoyed my evening and uh, yeah, like and subscribe and all that shit. You didn't, you didn't even move a muscle. You're like too scared. You're like, don't move. <laughs> the Scotsman might see me. But uh, give it up for uh, fucking Ian Pringle one more time, ladies and gentlemen. Um... My name's Roz Evans. Keep that round of applause going for our next act is Roz Evans! Man, I was shitting myself. I didn't even know I was up on the first half, so I fuck I had to run in. I almost forgot my jokes, bro. Man, what do I do? Play games? Wank a lot. I uh, love my missus. She's over there. And uh, that's about it. I'm shit on camera if you guys are not gonna What's going on, guys? What's up? Uh... Oh, what? He can't sound fucking Australian now, you weirdos? Oh, is that what we're laughing at? Oh, what the fuck?
Uh, I actually just recently turned 31. And, um, thanks. I'm coming to terms with the fact that uh, this fucking growth spur is just like not happening, eh? <laughs> Fucking sucks, man. I hate being a short man. You know what I hate about it the most is that society has decided that we're like we're not allowed to be angry in public. <laughs> Seriously, like correct me if I'm wrong, but if you saw a tall guy going off and causing a scene, you'd be like, oof, don't mess with him. He's obviously having a bad day. But if you saw a short guy do the exact same thing, you'd be like, <laughs> wow, relax, little man. Jesus. It's like we're not allowed to have bad days. See it. I see a tall guy go crazy and I'm like, fuck's this guy mad about? He can ride any roller coaster he wants. <laughs> like, should be pretty understandable that all short men are always angry. Why? I'll give you three reasons, okay? One, there is no way for us to exit a fall drive without looking hilarious. <laughs> uh, two, facial hair only makes us look cuter. And three, Children just like don't respect us. It's, I think it's because they get confused if we're maybe one of them. Kind of diminishes your authority. Like I, I try to tell them off and it looks like this. Kids, stop fucking around. <laughs> Look at this tall motherfucker. Yeah. <laughs> A lot of people like to judge old white men and young Asian women for being together. Uh, they call them mean things like, uh, ew, look at that uh, perv, or ew, look at that gold digger. Uh, I try to be nice, so whenever I see them, I just call them mum and dad. <laughs> yeah. What's funny about my parents is that uh, my dad's actually younger by seven years, and, um, uh, but because he's white, you can't really tell. <laughs> I actually uh, overheard a group of women calling my dad a creep and I was like, wow, what the fuck? These guys have no idea. No idea. That's actually my mum who's the creep. It's a weird couple, I know, but uh, my parents' differences would actually brought them together. Yeah, mum was poor and dad didn't like to cook, clean, talk much, spend much, or treat women right. Uh, so it's the little things that didn't matter for daddy. Um, I think it's weird that it's perfectly legal to spew anywhere, but you'll cop a fine for chucking a shit in a kebab shop after a night out. Like, it makes no sense, right? Both pretty stinky bodily fluids in public. I actually asked a cop why that is, and he said that it's complicated because spew's a bit of a grey area, and that they've got CCTV footage of me shitting on the falafel. I'm a nobody, so it's a good place to test already kind of set up material that I want to improve on. Because uh, you can't come with new shit here. You just eat shit really hard. So I stopped doing stand-up for like two years. Had a mental breakdown. So I'm back strong. And um, like I said, it's a good place to test material if you're a nobody. So I just punched it up, added some extra shit, just so I can get some like immediate feedback with like a big crowd. Always get awesome crowds, man. People are drunk as fuck. They want to laugh at shit. Uh, I'd like to dedicate this performance to Allah. Um, I'm not a Muslim, but I'm a big fan. <laughs> all right, sorry, sorry. Um, dedicate this to uh, my niece. Her name's Summer. Freshly born, love it a bit, and uh, yeah, that's it. That's Rose Evans, ladies and gentlemen. Rose Evans, ladies and gents, working, uh, doing a great job. Hey, so my name is Shash Kapoor. I'm a Perth comedian, just made the move to Sydney, and I'm back to do the gong show, so that's pretty sick. Please put your hands together for Shash Kapoor. Uh, Sydney is good, man. It's really good. It's like uh, the benchmark is so high up there, so you have to have your A game all the time. I think that's made me better as a comic. Like, even tonight, the response I got from the same crowd with similar jokes was so much better than what I usually get. So, it's pretty sick. I think Sydney is a hustle city. Like, everyone is busy, busy, busy. So, if they're there, they just want to laugh. They don't want to stay with you on a story unless you're a phenomenal storyteller. But for people, like, oh, I'll give it a go. You know, like, I'll give it a fair go. So, it's quite different. And, like, I think that poor people are also, like, way more bubbly. Uh, a Sydney man, like, I went to a cafe today and like the lady smiled at me while taking my order. I was like, so good to be back in Perth, you know? So it's, it's, that, that's the biggest difference. Like people's excitement and that I think translates directly to a comedy show. Hey everyone. <laughs> I, I got this fresh cut today. I, I thought it would make me look tough. But now I look like someone who would sell you drugs. 
and then help you claim it on your tax return. It's really... <laughs> And since I got this haircut, I'm going through an identity crisis. Like every time I look in the mirror, I realize I'm not white, I'm not black, I'm just brown, but I want to be both. L like to be black, I start wearing a chain and to be white, I get comprehensive car insurance. So, yeah. I feel like if we're on a color bonds game, you'd fit exactly in the middle between me and him. <laughs> like but that's true, man. Like, like to, to be black, I hustle, but then to be white, I go for therapy. It's a pretty good balance, you know, like. <laughs> And I have traditional Indian parents, so I had to like come out to my parents and I'm seeing a therapist. And my dad is like, Shashu, your life is perfect. Why do you need therapy? And it's so awkward when the problem asks what the problem is. I mean like, <laughs> daddy should fuck you, brother. <laughs> like I, I did that joke with my dad in the crowd. Everyone was laughing and my dad is like, what's so funny about this? And this lady looks at my dad and says, you. I was like, thanks, mom. So, uh... <laughs> but my, I have interesting parents, man. And like, life has been good for me. Like, I've, I've been in Australia for seven years. And finally, last year, I got my citizenship. <laughs> Fucking Aussie, my dear. <laughs> and, and even to get my citizenship, I, I celebrated. I went to fucking Bali, so. <laughs> Fucking Aussie, my dear. Like, like in Bali, I ordered a taxi and I'm thinking a car is going to show up, but a skinny guy shows up on an ATCC moped. And I'm sitting behind him like this. I'm like, this is awkward. So I put my water bottle in the middle. Now this guy's weaving through traffic. He slams on the brakes. Me and the bottle go in his back. Bam. Suddenly he turns around. He's like, brother, brother, brother. And I said, bottle, bottle, bottle. And it was a beautiful moment. Because we did not speak each other's language, but we spoke the language of gay panic. So... And because I was in Bali, I also got a tattoo. It just says gay panic over here. So that's uh, pretty sick. Uh, but I do miss home, man. Like, I've been in Australia for seven years, and I do miss home. And whenever I miss home, I've started finding similarities. Like, one of my favorite things to do is I take the public transport when it's a really busy event at the Opta Stadium. <laughs> L like a while ago, I was on the train and there was a guy standing right here. Now I have a bit of a belly, he had a bit of a belly. So to avoid making things awkward, we had to like synchronize our breathing. <laughs> but then I got distracted and our bellies touched. We've been together for a year now. Uh... If I can get to dedicate this performance, I'm gonna dedicate this to my parents, man. Like, uh, I'm going home actually, so I'm really excited to see them and all jokes aside, the 350 is going to go a long way in India, so I'm looking forward to winning it if I do. So keep an eye out for Perth Fringe Festival. I'm going to be back. Feb is when my shows are going to start. I'm still thinking on the name, but it's most likely going to be from Mumbai with love. So come check it out. I've, it's going to be my best work so far. So I'd love to see you guys there. And yeah, you can also look me up. My All my socials are brown spicy man. That's, that's true. The guy behind the camera is really handsome. If you ever come to the comedy lounge, ask for him. He's got a nice smile. Look at that. God damn. <laughs> Give it up for Shash, ladies and gentlemen. Shash, all right. All right, guys. Give it up for all the acts you saw, ladies and gentlemen. The fabulous acts. What we're going to do is we're going to get the finalists all back on stage. So everyone that made it through, come back on. Let's just fuck. We let pretty much everybody through, didn't we? Um, <laughs> Fucking Ewan's pretending he's in Django Unchained. <laughs> we'll ask them to turn around and face the wall for me. Uh, I'm going to point to one of these people that if you think they should win the money, please make as much noise. Did you have to do that to the one other black guy, you piece of shit? You know what I mean? Like, um, but yeah, I'm gonna point to them. Please make as much noise as you can if you want them to win. If you don't want them to win, shut the fuck up. Let's just vote for one person and one person each, guys, because sometimes everyone's yelling and we're never gonna get out of here. So, uh, let's start with this person. Make, ladies and gents, make some noise for this person. Make some noise for this person. Uh, this person here. All right, sorry, yeah, you can just go home. Uh, 
See you later. Uh, this person. Sorry, mate. Uh, this person. See you later. Uh, uh, this person. This person. This person. They're getting softer and softer. You know, people have changed their minds. This is amazing. This person here. This person here. This person. And this person. Oh, sorry, Nola. See you later. Yeah, you feel fucking good now? This might be the last vlog show. Okay, too much. Um, Three people left, ladies and gents. Remember, vote for one person and one person only. Let's do this. Uh, this person here. This person here. This person here. All right. Give it third place. Give it to Ian Pringle, ladies and gentlemen. So let's get him the fuck out of here. Ladies and gents, first place, give it to Jill Cordoner! Second place, Ian Burke! Fuck yes! I didn't win, I came third, it was fun. Got 50 bucks, I'll cover a couple of drinks, a few drinks. Nah, no, I'm happy with that, man. Uh, I, I lost my headphones at work today, so I'm gonna have to replace those, so it's just like a negate the loss today. No, I was fucking whipper snipper and they like fell out of my pocket and then it's like literally just nothing but cut grass and I'm like that is a needle in a fucking haystack. And I genuinely did, I was rooting around and I was like, the field was like fucking three acres and I was like, there's no way I'm finding this shit. I just have to call it and give up and go home and cry. I'm praying that Jill doesn't show up to the gong tonight so I have a chance of winning, but no! <laughs>